everyone, coming to you from this sketchy alleyway over here. So there are two main sets of mass curses found in the Torah. They're the ones found back in Parsha Bukhukotai, where Hashem curses the people in first person and says that if you don't listen to my ways, I'm going to do all these bad things to you. And they're the ones found in this week's Parsha, in Parsha Kitavo, where it's Moshe speaking on behalf of Hashem in third person, that if you don't listen to Hashem's ways, then Hashem is going to do all these bad things to you. And there's one glaring difference that stands out between these two sets of curses, not so much in content, but in style. We're back in Parsha Bechukotai, the common repeating suffix is chem, 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 use, 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 that's Y-O-U-S, meaning Hashem is cursing the people in the plural, as opposed to here in Parsha Kitavo, where the common repeating suffix is cha, 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 you, 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 in the singular, Hashem is cursing the people. And this isn't just a technical difference, it's actually something much, much more profound. Rashi makes the comment in this week's parsha that Hekel Moshe Bitzvarav Be'onran Belashon Yachid, meaning this switch when Moshe decided to change from plural to singular, it was an intentional switch. Because apparently saying curses in singular instead of, pl instead of plural is something more kal. It's a lighter, it's a less intense kind of curse. So why is this so? I think this relates back to what we said last week about marriage. That there are two different kinds of ways of viewing a group of people. A group of people can either be a bunch of individuals or it could be one unit. So if we look at the way Hashem curses the people back in Parsha B'chukotai when he does it in the plural, there's not just one bad thing going on, but there are two bad things. Hashem says, if you don't listen to my laws, then number one, all these bad, scary things are going to happen to you. But number two, you're going to have to endure all these bad, scary things as individuals. You're going to be alone. You're not going to be able to do it together. It's going to be chem. You're going to be plural. Each of you is going to be doing it as, as, as an alone, separate individual. But in Parsha Kitavo, Moshe says, yes, you're going to have to endure all these bad, scary things if you don't listen to Hashem's laws, but you're going to be doing it as a cha, as a singular unit. You're going to be going through these bad stuff, but you're going to get to go through them together. And I think it's such an important message to keep in mind this time of year, right? Because Elul is time set aside for tshuva. But tshuva isn't something that's just reserved for Elul. I'm able to do tshuva during any point of the year, too. But what's the reason that we generally are more successful with growing and repenting in the month of Elul? It's because at any point of the year when I'm trying to grow and I'm trying to improve, I'm doing it alone. But in Elul, everyone is in this together. And as Am Yisrael, we tend to have strength in numbers. And I think we're supposed to take this hint that Moshe Rabbeinu was telling us in, telling us in Parshat Kitavo, that whether it's enduring triumph or tragedy, or whether it's falling, whether it's getting up, Am Yisrael has a secret weapon. They are able to function ki'ish echad, belid echad, and, and, and work together as one unit. And that is where we find our strength, and that is where we are most successful. Okay, everyone have a meaningful level and a great job, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.